A shallow magnitude 7.8 earthquake would be a disaster anywhere in the world. But for Nepal, the combination of high population density, remote communities, poorly constructed buildings and unstable slopes, the catastrophe was made so much worse. In fact, estimations from the United States Geological Society for the same quake in Vancouver, for example, the death toll would likely be fewer than 100. Still a tragedy, but those numbers are likely 1,000 times greater for Nepal. Uh, this is from a security camera outside a home in Kathmandu, 80 kilometers east of the initial epicenter. Now, part of the reason why the shaking was so extreme here is that the earthquake didn't hit in one spot. In fact, in 90 seconds, it ripped 100 kilometers from west to east through Kathmandu. The whole city was displaced by three meters. And Kathmandu also sits on the type of sedimentary soil that actually amplifies and reflects the shaking, making it feel stronger and last longer. And that rupture zone continues to generate aftershocks. In fact, there have been over 40 aftershocks of 4.5 or higher that would have been felt on the ground just in the first three days, and they will likely go on for weeks and months as the earth settles into its new position. Now, they'll generally decrease in magnitude and frequency over time, but a stronger outlier is not out of the question. And every time the ground shakes, it not only brings down new structures already weakened by the big one, but it creates additional landslides and avalanches and is terrifying for the thousands sleeping out in the open as we head into the rainy season. Now, this is a part of the world used to earthquakes. Two slabs of the Earth's crust are converging together at a rate of five centimeters per year. A similar setup to the tectonics off the coast of BC or Japan, but the difference is that rather than the heavier ocean plate diving below the continental plate, the two plates with the same density are instead crumpling and literally causing the uplift of the Himalayas. Hundreds of small to moderate sized earthquakes occur each year along this boundary, but a section of the boundary had gone silent. Stress was building for decades as the two plates became stuck and locked together. We couldn't say exactly when, but we knew a big one was coming. In fact, just a week before the earthquake, a team of scientists met in Nepal to figure out how to get this poor country better prepared for the next big one. But it was a problem almost too big to tackle. And it will likely be some time before we truly realize the full impact of this catastrophe. And hopefully there will be some big changes during the rebuilding because large earthquakes are still locked up, waiting to happen just a little farther west down that deadly fault line. Johanna Wagstaff, CBC News, Vancouver.